service at this time. The first film I saw was The Prophet. I thought it was going to be about Muhammad, may peace be upon him. You know, I thought it would be like a Muslim version of the Prince of Egypt, the, the Nativity story. Well, no, it's actually based on a book. It's an, it's an animated film, uh, kind of in the style of Disney meets uh, that film about Bashir. Um, Anyways, it, it's, it feels like hand-drawn, um, but the, the frame rate's a bit higher, so it looks a bit smoother. Or basically, he wants to, he wants to commit martyrdom, even though, even though he says that it doesn't matter if I sign the paper, or it won't make a difference. People like if I sign the paper, paper people will know the difference. If I don't sign the paper, well, I guess he's gonna die. That's the one part of the film I really didn't like. Like, he knew he had a way out, and he knew it wouldn't change the relationship with people. But he decided to die for a cause because he perhaps thought that all his work would be made more significant. Mm -hmm. The film is very nice. They have, like, six little short films within the main narrative, and they're very poetic. Every, each sequence is done by a different person. It's gorgeous. It's so wonderful. It made me feel so good inside. The other thing is, they don't have a developed villain in this film at all. They have the one general guy who's in charge of it all, and we don't discover him until near the film, near the end of the film. That's who gives him the ultimatum. But it's strange that he doesn't, the film, the story doesn't develop the villain at all. And the villain, I mean, a large part, I mean, that's usually the character who may, has to make a choice either to change or not to change, based on the the leadership of the hero. The hero leads by example, but if the villain can't be changed, it becomes a tragedy, isn't it? Family films like this, especially when they deal with mature subject matter, such as death and evil, um, like these are the best. These should be the best kind of family films. Because it's layered for young and old. So the young people like, oh, look, there's a kid protagonist kind of thing. And there's all these colorful things happening and talking to birds and stuff. And yay. But for the old folks, too, it's like, like, um, especially I think this was written by an older man. At least the book was written by an older man. And so they're trying to impart life lessons, like what they've learned. So it's good for the old people to connect with the old people. But also, so when a family comes together, they watch the film, like, oh, 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 oh. So when afterwards they talk about it, it's like they themselves prolong the conversation that was initially started by the film. That's the best kind of family films. In fact, we should do away with general and PG, just have everything PG, because parental guidance. Well, you should be guiding your child through all of everything, you know, until they can leave on their own. Uh, they'll be around 18 when they can start making, watching rated R films. Because so at that point, you'd hope that they developed enough critical thinking skills, enough kind of a backlog of, uh, you know, a library of films, stories, etc., that they be able, they, they can become their own parents. They can have their own conversation with themselves and with others around them. They have more mature, more well-rounded education, you know, in order to talk about it. And they can continue to, you know, develop, but at least they kind of like, ah, okay, they're not totally, I guess they're not really scared by it, but also they can, they're mature enough that they see all the different layers happening, and they start to question, it becomes all kind of like learning experience from then on in. But before they turn 18, that's when the family has to kind of act as their teacher until they can learn to teach themselves. <laughs> is not in service at this time.